We're going to take what we've been learning about mix-ins and roll it into something that's a little more complex and where a mix-in might actually make a little bit more sense. This is what the page that we're going to be working on looks like. And you can see it's a pretty simple page, but I do have this object that's animating on the page. This is completely generated via CSS. Let's take a look at the HTML and the CSS. Here's the HTML. The page itself is very simple. I am linking to the style sheet that I've been using in some of the previous exercises, main.css, but I do have some rules that are particular to this particular page. So I just made another SAS file that's going to generate a file called shape.css. And this file is going to contain all of the particular rules that have to do with this exercise. I decided for this exercise just to keep them all in one SAS file because I think it'll be a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. The HTML is very simple. The main element that I want to bring your attention to is that I have a div with a class of shape. That is this particular shape that we have animating. So that's all I have in regards to the HTML. Now the SAS file that I currently have for this particular file looks like this. I have some rules on the body that are particular to this page. I have a rule on the article and I'm setting the position to relative as well as adding some padding and a minimum height. And I have a rule that's overriding some of the settings on our footer rule from the previous exercise. These are the rules that I have that are controlling the shape. So I have a rule for the dot shape that sets its width and height, a position of absolute, a left percent location and I'm calling in via the animation property my rotation keyframe which I'm setting down here which is just rotating this 360 degrees I'm telling it to animate over four seconds to go on an infinite amount of times and to be linear in that the speed is consistent throughout then I have some pseudo selectors here for after and before and this is what's actually creating the substance of the shape. So I have my content set to nothing. I'm using position of absolute. I'm setting the top and the left values of where I want this to be on the page, width and height of the element. I'm setting a border, which is actually what we see, that blue shape. I have a box shadow, which the box shadow is actually doing this little glow on the inner and outsides of my shape. And you can see here that I'm using vendor prefixes for border radius and for transform. Vendor prefixes work really well in mixins because once you set them up, you don't have to continually write them over and over again, which if I wanted to animate multiple objects, which we eventually will do, you'll see that our SAS code is going to be much more consolidated and concise. So what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to turn these elements that I'm using right here into mixins so that I can repurpose them and make other elements that use these same basic principles. I am going to select my shape element and I'm going to just comment this out so that I can still reference what it is that I wanted to do here. I'm going to create a mixin called shape stats and for the arguments I'm going to pass on arguments for width and height so I can control those. The left offset, which is going to be my left position, and then the animation. And you can see for left offset and animation, I'm going to use some default values. And then for the actual properties, I'll pass in width and use my argument of dollar sign $w, height dollar sign $w. Position is always going to be absolute, so I'm not going to pass on an argument for that. Then I have my left, and I'm using my left offset, which will default to the default value that I'm plugging in, and then the animation, and that's going to use my animation argument. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this mixin into our shape. So I'll make a new rule for dot shape, and I'm just going to use my at include, the name of the mixin, which in this case is shape stats and two of the required values are width and height. So I'll go ahead and plug in 212 pixels and I'll put a comma and put 100 pixels. For this shape, I'm gonna use the default values for left and animation. We'll save the file and if we go look at it in the browser, nothing has actually changed so far. So, so far so good. 
were just making a mix-in to control these things, we wouldn't expect anything to be different. Now we'll convert the pseudo class selector into a mixin as well. So I'm going to select the existing code and comment it out. And then we'll go about creating another mixin. So we'll come down here and we'll create a mixin. I'm going to call this mixin shape pseudo. And this mixin is going to be a little bit more complex in regards to the arguments that we're going to be passing in. We have quite a few more arguments. So just going down from the existing property value pairs, content is always gonna be the same, so no argument there. Position is gonna be the same. Top, left, width, and height are all gonna be values that I wanna be able to augment. So I'm going to specify and pass on arguments for those. Width and height are gonna have default values, but obviously this can be changed. And top and left are going to expect a specific value to be entered. Then we're going to move on to the border property. So the border property is one that I want to include all of the declaration for the border. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and say border, and then I'm passing on as a default value our 20 pixel solid blue border. That's what's currently being used on the shape that we have. Then for the shadow, the shadow is more complex. You can see I'm using the box shadow and I'm actually passing on two different box shadows, one on the outside and one on the inside. So for this one, because this one is more complex, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna pass on the argument of shadow and then in parentheses, I'm gonna pass on a variable called val and that's where I'm gonna expect people to enter the value. We're gonna do the same thing for radius, and that's because if you look at my shape, I am using radius, but I'm not using a fixed radius all the way around. You can see I've plugged in four values for that, and I am also using the vendor prefixes here, so we'll correct that when we make our shape. And then my final argument is going to be for transform, and I'm going to pass on a default value of rotate, a negative 45 degrees, which is what I'm currently using on my animation. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and set the properties up. So for this, I'm just going to pass the values to be my arguments that we've just created. So you can see that content is always going to be the same, position absolute, those are exactly the same. For top, I'll pass on the argument left width, height, etc. And you can see that I'm just using my arguments. I do want to bring your attention down here to the vendor prefixes where I'm using my WebKit border radius, Moz border radius, and then border radius. And I'm using the values for radius, whatever they may be. In this case, it's going to plug in this default value, but that could be changed if the developer wants to. And then the same thing for transform. Now what I need to do is I need to take advantage of my mixin. So I'm going to make a new rule for my pseudo classes and we'll go ahead and use the at include directive. I'm going to include my shape pseudo mixin and then I'm passing on the values. So the first one is top, which we are just pulling right from here, one and a half M's, 40% for the left. And then notice for shadow, I actually went ahead and put shadow, and that's because I'm skipping over my width and my height, I'm using the default values, as well as the border. When you're dealing with mixins, you can actually write down the arguments, and then you can actually pass them in in any order. They don't have to go in a specific order if you're gonna include the names. I didn't include the names in the first couple of ones. They followed the order. Now I'm kind of skipping over because I'm using some of the default settings. So I'm specifying shadow here and I'm passing on the values that I want to use, the same ones that were the, in the original declaration for shadow. And then the same thing for radius. You can see that I'm passing on the value for radius. I did not include transform because I'm using the default value that we provided. Now, if we save, and when I refresh, I don't see my shape, so I must have an error. Let me just take a quick peek in here. Oh, I neglected to put the C on content, so I'm gonna fix that, and we'll go back and refresh, and there's our shape. And you can see that the shape is moving in the exact same way that we just experienced, so everything got transformed over. Now, the power of the mixin is gonna come in 
when I want to create another shape in my document. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to go into my HTML and I'm simply going to create another div and this one's going to have a class of shape 2. So again, it's exactly the same as what we had. I'm just giving it a new class name. I'm going to come into my SAS file and what we'll do is we'll use our shape stats mixin and we'll pass in some new values for the new shape that we just made. So this one has a name of shape 2 and we're going to use our at include directive and in my parentheses I'm going to now pass on that I want the shape to be 100 by 100 pixels so we'll use some different dimensions and I'm going to position its left position at 10 percent. Then I'm going to come down underneath the shape pseudo mixin. Remember that when you're going to use the mixins you have to make sure that you're using them after they've been initiated. So we'll come down here and I'm just going to copy this and we'll just make some changes to the setting right here. So this one's going to be called shape 2 after and shape 2 before and we're going to use our shape pseudo at include and then let's just change some of these. So I'm going to use 1M for my top location and we'll use 10% here for the left offset. I'm going to also pass on some values for the width and the height. So I'm going to use 30 pixels and 30 pixels for the width and the height. They are going to override the default values that we plugged in of 60 and 60. This is going to be about half the size. And let's make some augmentations to the other values as well. I'm going to change the color on the border and I'm going to change some of the properties on my shadow. So before we didn't plug anything into the border, and I'm going to do border now. So I'm not going to use the defaults. I'm going to make the border 10 pixels. It's going to be solid and it's just going to be a color of yellow. And then for my shadow, I'm just going to alter some of these settings. The offset, the color is going to be purple for the outer color and kind of a goldish yellow for the inner color. And then for the radius, we're just going to set that the radius is just going to be 50 pixels all the way around. So we're not going to use those multiple values. And I don't need these surrounding parentheses since there's just one value in there. And we're going to also use a transform value here as well. So let's write transform. And this needs the dollar sign because this is one of our arguments. And I'll tell this to transform 50 pixels. All right, so let's save this and let's take a look at our file. You can see that now I have another shape, my new shape, and it is rotating. It looks like we might have shrunk our original shape, so let's check on that. Actually, I had written the 30 pixels up here in the original shape, so I just put those in the wrong one. Let me just move those down to our new shape. Ah, there we go. So now the yellow circle is much smaller. They're both rotating, you can see. I'm just going to make one more quick change to this just to show you how flexible the mixins can be. Let's go into the code. And I've already set up uh, some keyframes for the rotation. I'm going to set up some other keyframes. This is going to be for an animation that I'm calling Move It. And I'm going to now use Translate. So I'm going to translate the location of the object and I'm going to have it move from one side of my screen to the other. So I'm going to transform and translate it from 0 to 500 pixels and then back to 0. And I'm adding in percentages so this will happen over time. And then to take advantage of this all I need to do is go up into my shape 2 and in the at include shape stats this is where we specified our animation. I'm going to pass on some values for the um, animation here so that we can override this and change it. So I'll put a comma and then I'm going to open some parentheses here and we're going to put the name of our new keyframe which we called it move it so we'll use that inside of the parentheses and I'm going to tell that to happen over eight seconds. I'm going to use ease in and I'm going to tell that to take an infinite amount of time. And it looks like I have one extra set of parentheses. So let me get rid of that and we'll save this. 
And if everything goes according to plan, when we refresh, you can now see that the yellow circle is moving across my screen and then coming back. So you can see that by using the mixins, we have a lot of flexibility. And really, I've shortened my code considerably by using the arguments and then passing on these values and completely changing the look of it. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how powerful mixins can be and you can start to incorporate this into your SAS work.